your personal brand. <clears throat> okay. And the opportunities that your personal brand has given you, including yeah. being on the Joe Rogan podcast. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what's he like? <laughs> he is a, he is a legend. He is the same guy off podcast yeah, as he is on. You know, I remember I, I rocked up and it's sort of this big bunker in LA, like a big sort of man cave, if you like. I and love that. I want a man cave. Yeah, like, I want a female so cave. Cool. <laughs> I want and a bar. Like, yeah, yeah. Me and my friend were confused. We were like, is, it, is this it? Jack? And like, yeah, it's got to be. Because there's no signs. There's no advertising. He's yeah, not of course. Yeah. He is. And then, you know, knocked on the door, there are these two big sort of bouncers that answer. They, but they were just like big teddy bears. They're like, ah, sure, right, mate, come on in. We yeah. came in and he, he was sort of interviewing. He was interviewing Joey Diaz at okay. the time. Um, and, you know, Joe was shown us around. He's got the gym, he's got the cars, he's got the pool table, he's got the sort of branded coffee machine. He made us a, a turmeric latte or something. And he, we were just catching up. We were just talking before we went on on podcast. And then even after the podcast, we were talking for a good while again. Uh, we want to we wanna do it again. Um, he messaged only a couple of weeks afterwards saying that he's just come out of a restaurant with his wife and there's a group of lads that were raving about the, the episode oh, that, that we did. And so I was like, that's so cool to hear. But yeah, no, really cool guy. And you know, that happened. It's funny because I sort of, when I tell people that I've sort of done it all myself in terms of myself mm. and, and my dad, because he's got my back. Um, with that, it wasn't no sort of PR that, that reached out to him. I pretty much... I've not said this on many podcasts actually, but I pretty much set up an email that I wanted to send to him and then got about 14 other email addresses and bombarded his email from like my sisters, my brother-in-laws, my mums, my dads, you know, changed the beginning and end, left the middle, just because I knew once he saw the story, I believe he's going to want me on the show. Mm. So I need to get my story, you know, to his eyeballs. I need to get him to, to read it. And it got one, one of his agents. The agent ran it by Joe and he reached out to me not long after and said, I've run your story by Joe. He loves it. He wants you on the podcast. Can you be here in two weeks time? I was like, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. I love that as a story. Going back to what we were saying earlier about you don't need a lot of resource. Like every single person asks me oh how, like, how did you how did you do this how do you get that the other and i'm like you just fucking do it yeah. like you figure it out yeah i have never had anyone post anything for me up until this point like my team are helping with stuff now because yeah. it's at a different scale yeah. but up until this point it's all been me mm. every every single thing that we've done has been me and right. every single opportunity as a result of what i've done has yeah. come through me and i think to your point like setting up you know 14 different emails to make the thing that you wanted to make happen yeah. happen like what's your excuse guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what are you waiting for exactly <laughs> like, if exactly. you want something make it happen yeah for sure and i've got another story that's even bigger than that because this was this was a really important one was planning the yangtze trip mm. two years in the making and i had these different teams in place production teams logistics managers and they weren't really working to get the green light to be able to you know achieve mission yangtze or to be able to just get to the start line I remember thinking, man, this has gone on for months and no one's really doing anything. They said they're doing stuff. Well, obviously like, oh, we've always got next year, but I really wanted to, to get this mm. done. And this went on and on and on. And I thought, I know what I'm gonna have to do. And it's a bit of a risk, but I created a, a press release, organized sort of a, a, a press conference style in Canary Wharf, traveled it from Wales. Um, and I launched the announcement of Mission Yangtze I tied these different sponsors and fixers and production teams names to that press release and I didn't have no visa for China. I didn't have the access or the permits to be able to even get to the source of the Yangtze. Nothing was planned, funds weren't in place, visa wasn't even obtained. But I launched that press release in my mind thinking now the world is watching and they know that your brands are connected to this so you gotta make it happen <laughs> we have to make it happen and it was a big risk my friends and family were like don't don't do it because if it if if it backs backfires and you don't end up doing or go flying out there then that's bad for your name uh because i'd already done mongolia i'd already done madagascar so i'd announced it was like bbc yeah it was a lot saying this is the next plan but I thought, I'm, I'm, there's no other way I'm going to have to. And it, it worked. They all started working. Of course they did. We got the finances for it and we made it happen. <laughs> yeah. you know? 